Yeah, so we're presenting here a poster on a phase two trial, which we've organized across Canada. There's actually nine sites, uh, which is looking at a novel uh, first line chemotherapy for patients with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. Um, around the world, different first line treatments are used uh, for the management of patients with Waldenstrom's. In some places, uh, chemoimmunotherapy is used, such as bendamustine rituximab, in other places, um, a proteasome inhibitor such as bortezomib is added and now we have the BTK inhibitors which are also uh, available in some geographic locations but uh, and they all of these have are quite effective in that they cause patients to, to respond and to go into remissions but the observation is that um, the uh, percentage of complete remissions or very good, what we call very good partial remissions is very low. It's around 20% or 23%. So patients go into remissions, the remissions last for a while, but there's a lot of lymphoma left in the body and these patients eventually relapse. So we've uh, hypothesized that what we could do is perhaps get deeper responses in patients with Waldenstrom's by combining two accepted uh, frontline therapies uh, and the, the two lines that were, the two therapies that we've combined are bendamustine and rituxan together with acalabrutinum, which is a second generation BTK inhibitor. Um, so that's the rationale behind it. And our objective is to look at what happens to the complete and very good partial response. Do we see more patients, a higher percentage of patients going into complete and very good partial responses. And then we're also going to look at, of course, other conventional endpoints such as progression-free survival, overall survival. And um, we also have uh, some novel endpoints, uh, which are minimal residual disease. So um, often uh, patients can have significant amount of uh, lymphoma left in their bone marrow or their peripheral blood, which can't be detected by conventional uh, tests. And uh, there are some molecular tests, so we'll be using next generation sequencing of DNA from the bone marrow and from the peripheral blood to see if we can detect very, very small frequencies of uh, lymphoma DNA in those sites. And so that would be another test of how deep um, the response is with this novel combination of two different uh, treatments for Waldenstrom. So that's the idea behind this. Uh, we're trying to accrue 59 patients right now. We're presenting at this meeting uh, the interim results with 38 patients. Uh, the interim results look very good. We're, I think we're achieving what we expected to achieve. So whereas I told you um, with uh, one of those therapies, either uh, bendamustine rituxan or, or ibrutinib as uh, monotherapy, first line therapies, we expect to have a complete and VGPR rate of 23%, we're already seeing that our rate is closer to 60 or 70%. So we're really doing uh, quite well. Um, no patient yet has relapsed, although uh, the follow-up is short. Um, we are seeing uh, in the patients that we've assessed to date that we are achieving a negative MRD uh, in the peripheral blood in most patients. And in the bone marrow, we are achieving negative MRD in some patients. Uh, further follow-up of later samples will be very interesting in those patients. The one question you might ask is, what's the toxicity profile? Now you're combining two different you know, lines of uh, types of therapy. Will you get a lot more toxicity? Well, what we're finding is that the adverse events are, are what we expect uh, from both of these types of treatments. It's not that we're not seeing synergistic or greater adverse events. The, the uh, high level or grade three, grade four toxicities is, is relatively low. Um, we've only had to do, uh, dose reduce uh, one patient out of the 38. And um, uh, there's been some serious adverse events that are treatment related. Generally, they're uh, neutropenia and infection, which is something that you would expect with bendamustine uh, chemotherapy. So um, those are the results in a nutshell. Um, they're preliminary, um, and, uh, but they do look promising. I think we are gonna achieve the endpoint that we expected to achieve.